All right, continuing with data cleansing. Now we're going to start to take a look at what happens when we have erroneous outliers and erroneous values. Okay. And um, there's different types of ways of being able to do this. And the way that we're going to use in this example is we're going to use summary statistics to help identify those errors. Now, software, there's a lot of software out there. Excel is uh, typically not statistical software, but software like SPSS, um, people that are familiar with using Python for stati statistics and or R as a programming language for statistics. Those are other things that are available for being able to help with outliers. Um, the most important thing to think about, though, is that you deal with your missing data and other errors uh, prior to doing any kind of final summary statistics. You might use summary statistics to help identify your outliers. Um, and then you go ahead and you clean it up and then you run your final summary statistics afterwards. So let's go back to our Excel example here. And um, I've included here the number of missing values with this count blank formula. And then also here, um, this is the average of that column, each column. And I went ahead and I copied that from left to right. So I have another value here. This is talking about uh, using statistics as standard deviation. So I'm going to use the standard deviation of a sample. And I'm going to go ahead and select that data range. And I'm going to copy that over to the other um, components here. Miles, of course, I need to decrease the decimals. Now I'm going to start to take a look at um, that standard deviation value against the average. And when I compare the mile difference, it's a difference of probably about um, two. Well, actually, that's that's quite a, a big difference. Think about this. That's if I were to go plus or minus twenty three thousand miles. That's quite a, a variance that I might want to consider. So there could be something going on right here with mileage. I have to evaluate whether that is unrealistic or not because those numbers are so close. Here I have a number that's really small compared to the average. And I think about it like plus or minus uh, two tenths of an inch from seven. That might be reasonable. But now I have one that I have 31 months versus 23 months or close to 24 months. Now I'm seeing that the standard deviation is greater than the average. So I definitely know uh, without, without question that I do know there is something going on here. So let's uh, continue with our analysis. I got to figure this out. So I'm going to type in the minimum of a data range. And I'm going to do maximum of the a data range. And I'm going to copy these over. Now I can see exactly right here. I have one data point that's showing the maximum value of 601, right? And 601 months. So you divide that by 12, um, and so that's not 6 years, that's 60 years, right? Or 50 years, excuse me. So I, I know that there's something with, with this data set here, and um, I, I have to take a look at this and kind of figure out what am I going to do about it. So one thing I can do is... Um, come over here to the life of tires. I'm going to look up 601 and I can see where that data set is coming to play. I'm guessing, right, they forgot to put the decimal place. This is a human error. It probably should be 60.1. Uh, but I'm going to leave it alone because I want to show a couple ways of being able to analyze some of these missing outliers as well. So looking more at life of tire, let's go ahead and insert um, a box plot and I want to show you this just shortly. Um, here we have a box plot of that life of tire values. And you can see this doesn't look like a normal box plot. Um, and, and the reason why it doesn't is because um, of that outlier value. So here is where everything is kind of all grouped together. And we have this 601 outlier. So this is another tool that we can use to help identify some outliers. Now I'm going to use a small trick in Excel 
to be able to evaluate um, other items. So like, for example, I'm going to select on my chart, come over here to the left, drag this box over. And now I have tread depth. All right. And I can see here, this is probably that 16.7 value. Yeah, it looks just about right. Right. So I can see that this is a pretty major outlier um, on the on the tread depth. But then I have a lot of outliers here, and I might have to ask myself if this is reasonable. Right. And that is something I'll have to kind of consider if what I'm going to do about it. I know that um, 601 is unreasonable for life of tires, but 16.7 may not be. It might be quite plausible. All right. All right. So let's go look at the um, mile average or the miles of the tire. And uh, so I know that this value here is that 107 value. I also have some others. But this box plot looks pretty clean, and I have, you know, all these values in, in the other quadrants. So I know I have outlier issues, but I have to then think, what am I going to do? Do I delete these particular observations? And how does that affect my analysis? This is something that every um, data a analyst person has to deal with. Um, in this particular case, I know that I have to do something about this 601. Let me delete that box plot. Let me show you another thing that we can look at. We can look at tread depth and miles. We can uh, go insert and do a scatter plot. And this is a simple scatter plot looking at uh, the cross section of those two particular items. And we see here there's still something that is out here um, that seems to be outlier an outlier of all the others. But we can see that when I look at the combination of these, this is really the grouping of all that data. So this might give me a clue that perhaps I got to do something with this value here, the 16.7, right? So uh, let's do the first thing. Let's go find that um, 601. And I think just looking at it reasonably, it should be 60.1. Okay, I'm going to hit close. And let's kind of look at what happened to um, our summary statistics. Ah, look at this. Now things are, are, are improving, right? Uh, let's go ahead and look at that box plot. I should not have deleted it. Okay. Well, now I have another value. It's at 111, but that 111 might be reasonable. Um, a person might be living in a snow climate or a sandy climate uh, where they're actually able to get more life out of their tires uh, because they're not driving on the road constantly. So that could be a possibility, you know, for that one. All right. So what I might do now for this tread depth, I have that 16.7, right, which is causing uh, this item out here on the far right. And what I might decide to do is, in this case, is just um, omit that particular um, observation. So here I'm going to go look, tread depth, oh, sorry, hit the wrong combination here, and it was 16.7. There it is. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete it. And let's go take a look at our stuff, see what happens. Oh, it might have occurred more than once. Did I do that right? Let's go back, undo. Oh, I deleted the wrong one. Here we go. Delete. Now, now let's go take a look at it. There, that kind of cleans some things up. All right. So I might decide to start making a, an analysis process off this right here. All right, we'll clean this up in the next video, and uh, we'll talk about our next steps.